All right, here we go. Kido Butai, what it appears to be, coming in to hit midway. There it is. And taking flat losses at 10,000 feet. Oh, here we go. Lexington, they're in, they're in. Oh. Well, that's a little disappointing. Our, <laughs> our combat debut with the Lexington and we lose an SPD Dauntless and hit nothing. Oh yeah, here we go. Got some Kates coming in at maximum range, unescorted, because all the escorts got blasted away by the B-17s. So this ain't gonna be pretty. I don't even think we need to watch this. These guys are dead. Boom. All right, well, the cap held out. Dauntless is coming in unescorted here. Ooh, Fabuki. Man, what in the world? Come on, we gotta do better than this. Max range. Hey everybody, it's Shokin Hyde, and I'm back with the Desert Wolf versus Locust Center campaign, January 4th, 1942. Uh, just a fair warning, I'm eating ice cream right now, so I'm going to try to mute my mic in between bites, but <laughs> if you hear any chomping or noises, it's uh, cookies and cream. Hmm. There we go. Got to love these, uh, these Coast Watchers, right? Bunch of nonsense. Oh, man, that, oh. Mmm. Hmm. I don't know what that's about. Where's the escort at? There's no way he's running um, AOs and tankers out of Babel with that escort. It's very clear that the, the allies are set up there. Knowing what I know, I wouldn't go in there at all. It's not safe. Yeah. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Gosh, dang it! Ah. Come on, man! Man, come on. Ugh. And this is why... I've said this a million times. This is why I do not operate Japanese light carriers or any carriers in these areas. Like, I don't hover in here with them for like the first two months of the war. It's just too dangerous. There's too many subs here. Ugh. I mean, come on, man. They're all over this. They're all over here like a cheap suit. Mm. Yeah. Not good. Okay. It's coming in for another attack on Kendari with Issei. Hmm. 
Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Not that great. Didn't kill much, but uh, maybe they got some, some you know, disruption from it. There's a Mavis. So that's what he's got out of that core island is a uh, Mavis. I figured that's what it was. Okay, allies are sweeping again. Sorry, I was talking to my dog. She's got a sticker or like a foxtail in her hair. And she came up to me and I'm trying to pull it out and she walked away. Clear sky over Singapore. That should be good for bombing today. Sonia's hit Singapore. That's going to be rough. Yeah. Altitude are they bombing at? Yep. <clears throat> 14,000 feet. Yeah, Sonya's gonna get chewed up at that altitude. Morning air attack. Oh, okay. So this is, oh no, never mind. It's just airfield attack. Never mind. 20,000 feet. Got some nates coming in for strafing. There he goes, bombing industry again. Okay, allies are attacking this turn. Bombers. They don't hit anything.
guess some Dutch B-10 bombers going in for, I guess, a ground attack? No, you don't hit anything. Okay, Japanese are landing at Lei. To trading. Watch out, bombarding again. I'm not sure what his what the end state is here with these bombardments. What is he uh, trying to do with this? This number is not going to change, so why are we bombarding? Wen Chao makes its own supply and he knows that, so it's not like he's going to run him out of supply. get the point of the bombardments. I really don't. <laughs> He's bombarding here, though. And paying heavily for it. Yikes. Ugh. Hey, Minato, day three or four. I think we'll get it today. Yeah, he finally gets it. Okay. So he's cleared the final Dutch troops out of Monado, but boy, what a pain in the butt that was. Alright, and another attack at Kendari, but... Looks to me like the Japanese tank regiment's kind of gutted. Uh, still manages to pull off something here, so... They've got the forts down to zero now with the bombardments at Kandari. It's basically over with. So there you go. The defender has disruption. So the bombardment that came through by the Issei and the Nagato did a lot of damage. At least to the unit disruption wise. Okay, little tank attack here. It appears that the Allies have, or the Chinese here, have no anti-tank weapons at all. So despite the odds, the Japanese tanks are undamaged. And an Allied shock attack. I think this has a pretty good chance of succeeding here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Oh, man. Look at that. Nice little counterattack by the Chinese here. Only cost them two destroyed squads. The Japanese lose a lot of vehicles and are pushed way back. Like, they're going to have to spend several, like, two days just to get back to here. And they've lost all that ground that they... Wow. Yeah, I like this a lot. Hey, we'll talk about this when we go around the map. This move was very significant for the Allies. I like this. Well done. Well done. Okay, guys. Let's take a look at this. Aircraft losses today, uh, eight for the Japanese and two for the Allies. And this is a, a bit more of a normal day that I would expect at this time frame in the campaign. I'm having similar losses, right? It's unavoidable. You're going to have to attack places. You're going to have to take ops losses when you're attacking. So this is normal. This is what Locus should be looking for every day, if, if not a little bit better here. Ship sunk last turn. Uh, the air end was taken out by... Uh, a, a strange attack by some Nels at, at a dot base, whatever. 
And there you go, that's the score. Let's take a look at the map. So a lot of activity around Midway. Guys, my impression here, and again, I don't know, because I, I haven't seen anything more than what you've seen right now, is that there's going to be a subsequent following attack invasion on Midway. So we have Kido Butai here, sitting in providing cover, right? Other ships here doing ASW or something else at Kure, Kure Island. A bombardment task force, I guess, at Midway, right? And these guys what doing what appears to be some sort of cover. So I feel like there's going to be another force come in here to land here soon. Uh, he's just not letting go on this. And here's our disposition of forces. Supply is still an issue, but we've got enough to fight a little bit. Uh, base damage is um, kind of extensive to the point where we're not getting any forts built. So if he does come in with another major combat formation, he may be able to take this place. I don't know. But why? I, I haven't figured that out yet. And neither has Desert Wolf. I've spoken to him on our Discord. And he said without knowing the broader strategic and tactical goals that Loka has now... He doesn't know if Midway is worthwhile or not. Like, if he's going to continue trying to go after Hawaii, right? Then yes, you really need Midway as a waypoint. But if he's just doing this to do it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Not to me, anyway. We'll see. In China, there was a pretty substantial ground attack today by the Allies that was what I would consider influential or important. So, if we take a look at the map here... There was an armored unit here, right? It was an armored car unit and a and a uh, tank regiment. They were behind the lines and threatening the flanks. Well, Desert Wolf noticed that and sent these troops back and actually uh, did a fantastic job in beating them back. So if you look at it now, let's look at the, the hex side control. Uh, Desert Wolf has reestablished a solid front line here. And pushed him off to the flanks. For this guy to get back, he'd have to drive through this really crappy terrain here, right? Which is going to take forever with these vehicles. It's not even really feasible. Uh, and so he's basically solidified his lines in and around Changsha. Right? We've got a good blocking force here. A blocking force here. A Changsha is heavily uh, fortified. So I just don't see the uh, Japanese progressing past this line here. For some time. I mean, they can do it eventually when the rest of the Kuang Tung army gets down here. But in the meantime, uh, this the central part of China here, in and around Changsha, has a very solid defensive line. And I don't know what uh, Loka is going to do to break through here. He definitely appears to be working this this part of China a lot more than I did. A little further north, I, I just see him blocked in every little place he's getting through. And that's the stacking limits. Well, my opinion is it's the stacking limits causing this. Because he just cannot do a death stack move like, you know, Lodric did when I played him a million years ago. And like what I'm doing to Mach right now. I'm just blasting my way through these mountain passes with five, six, seven thousand AV because I have it. But in a stacking limit game, you cannot do that. So it's a lot slower on the ground. And... I don't like it. You know, by this time in my campaign against Macho, without stacking limits, I was basically in the Lan Chow. Uh, I was way past Sion, taking half the bases down here already. So uh, you can see how much further behind Loka is because of the stacking limits. He just cannot bring enough forces to bear in any given hex to power through. Another reason why I'm just not going to do it right now. Okay. Uh, the Japanese is still maneuvering around here in Burma, but I think I showed it last uh, video. He's in no danger at this point of cutting the Burma road. Or we're in no danger of it happening. Singapore still waiting for the shock attack. It's going to be any day now. I kind of thought it'd be this turn, but it hasn't happened. So any moment now. Uh, he's had enough time here to unpack and get moving. Right about my estimate, too. I said the absolute earliest that he would do this would be January 3rd or 4th or later. So we're at January 5th now, if you're looking at the top of the here, right? 
So, still hasn't got in here, but it's imminent. All right, uh, Philippines, I don't really see a lot of good stuff happening for the Japanese here either. Um, they're still taking heavy losses on these bombardments here, way more than we are. Our supply situation is not in a concern. And the only thing good here is that he's taking out a fort level and we can't build it back because his bombing has been a little more effective here. Uh, again, I want to give Loka some credit on the whole Mindanao operation here. It's been excellent. All of the allied troops are stuffed here into Malaybale with only one fort level and very little supply. So it, this place falling is going to happen soon. And the way he went about taking these bases and, and trapping everything here was very well done. Uh, I just barely secured Mindanao today, uh, you know, and it's February 20th in the video that I just recorded for my campaign. So Loke has done what I've done a month sooner. So definitely well done here on Mindanao. I, I, I had to give him the credit for that. Way better than I did it. Okay. So we saw the old Tayo take a torpedo down here today. And again, I mentioned it. This is why I do not like to run my light carriers in this area. Look at all these subs here. This is just uh, insane. This just makes my, my, uh, oh, it's giving me heebie jeebies. Just looking at, at all these subs here that he has to traverse. And, and they're all in blocking positions because right now I'm not cert entirely certain that he's got what it got necessary forces to move on. I think he'll take Kendari at some point here, but then he has to go in towards Makassar and other places. And there are so many subs here. He's going to just have to trip across a ton of them and he's going to take more losses, even trying to move around here. So this is a dangerous, precarious situation that he's in with these submarines and the fact that he's operating his aircraft this way or aircraft carriers this way. When I play, and I've done it, I have two campaigns now of success in the Dutch East Indies to show, granted, not against people like Desert Wolf, but still, they're, they're not horrible pe players. Uh, Monado is the key here. This is the linchpin for all of the subsequent follow-on operations. This is where you keep your land base there, your Zeros, your Bettys, your Nels. And then you leapfrog to one base at a time, right? I go down here, I take Ternate, then I take Ambon, then I take Kendari. But each base mutually, um, you know, mutually supports the other. And I do it very methodically, and I don't use my carriers here because they're just too dangerous. Anyway, I'm gonna go on and on and on, and I think you guys get the point. Land based there and the DEI is the key, not carriers, or else you're just gonna lose them like he has. Since we're already looking at it, here's the Lexington. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it's doing. It's standing off a bit. It is still spotted, but not, I don't think that's enough detection for him to know exactly what's here now. Maybe he just knows that there's something in the hex. Where it's gonna go next, I'm not entirely sure. And somebody asked me in another video, where's the Hermes? The Hermes is right here, sitting at Banjawangi, and it is not sighted. Okay, Dutch East Indies just landed in Ley, wait for that to fall. Did I say Dutch East Indies? This is the Solomons. The Dutch East Indies is the other way, up, up that way. Uh, Solomon's campaign, I feel, is going in incredibly slow for the Japanese. I don't know why He's not moving faster here, but on the flip side, I, does he really need to? I guess not, because there's not really any threat here at this time. You see, you can see it. He, he can't. The biggest threat is here at Horn Island, and the threat is only if he invades it. Like all there is basically right now are Catalinas keeping him sighted. Let's take a look at what he's doing here. So, Desert Wolf already built up fortifications on to three, which for an atoll is is quite good. It would cause a lot of casualties for any uh, any enemy landing there against that. So now he's going to focus on building up the air, airfield capacity for which he can use to launch offensive operations later on against these positions here. Okay, down here in the South Pacific, nothing to see. 
You know what we haven't looked for? The Enterprise, but I found it. Enterprise has gone through the Bass Strait here and appears to be going to Perth. And if I were a betting man, I think it's going to go up this way and join up with the Lexington and be just a fleet and being up here, which is going to force Loka to play very, very cautiously because it's really hard to move on Java when you know you have two U.S. fleet carriers there. Ask me how I know two U.S. fleet carriers or more in my campaign deposited aircraft at Bandung and Palembang when I did not expect them or see them coming. And it, I, I lost so many aircraft and ships in one day. Uh, you can go watch that video if you want to hear me cry, but it was rough. And now that, now that he knows that the American carriers are going to be operating here and Kido Batai is basically here. It's going to be hard to move around here now. I would not want to be him. Anyway, that's it for this video. As a general reminder, I'm going to start being a little more selective about the videos that I make. I think I've already mentioned this before. But if I watch a turn and I don't think that there's anything super noteworthy or at least not enough to make a full video on, what I'll probably do is present the highlights of that video at the start of the next full one that I'm going to make. Like, let's say I watch the January 5th video and it's pretty dull, but a couple little things happened that were important. I'll probably just put those little uh, sound bites or clips at the beginning of the next video, which would potentially be on January 6th. So you guys can see the stuff that I think you need to see that was worthwhile to set the stage for the next video. I, I hope that makes sense. I'm just trying to be a little more selective about the videos that I put out because otherwise it's just gets a little busy, right? And it's kind of monotonous. So anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one.